Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and I'm here to talk to you about a Leeds United based sponsor on the channel, TeamWallArt.com. The link is in the description, worldwide shipping and it's unbelievable guys. As I've told you before, this is the sort of stuff that you can get from these guys, my favourites on the end here, um, accused of everything, guilty of nothing since 1919. Um, you can get this one for $5.99 if you buy another one for $7.99. And I did that. I've got the one of Marcelo Bielsa here. A beautiful image. Really good quality as well, by the way. And of course, the title winning boys. Some really good stuff on there, guys. As I said, the link is in the description. I went to these guys. I love this uh, sort of stuff. And they are Leeds United fans. Go check it out. Enjoy the video. One Leeds is now sponsored by One Football. One Football is a really classy app. You can get all of your Leeds United updates on this app. You can get all the transfer news, injury news, match day news, and it really is top, top quality. The most downloaded app regarding football on the site. So make sure you go check it out. The link is in the description, and I hope you enjoy the video, guys. Hello everybody, welcome back to One Leads. We are here with Michael from the Blue Boys Network. We've just done a preview on his channel. Please go check it out if you haven't already. I'm sure you have. But we're here to preview the Leeds United versus Everton game, which is taking place midweek on a Wednesday night. Um, and yeah, oh God, I don't know how to feel about this one, Mike. I mean, I mean, what are your thoughts going into it, mate? Huh. Um. It's like deja vu, this, isn't it? It's scary, to be honest. It's scary because when we played, when we played you lot at our place, and I, I sat on my preview and I said, "Yeah, we're going to dick you. It's going to be three 0 four 0 It's going to be a piece of cake." And then, then you rolled us over one 0 in a in a fantastic performance by Leeds. It was the first time this season I sat there and went, "Everton can't do anything against this team." You know, we played Liverpool, we would beaten lots of decent teams, and we just couldn't beat Leeds. So, it speaks how good you were on that day. Everton away from home, it's it's a different kettle of fish. You know, we've had some fantastic results. As of you, you know, we've both beat Leicester away. Um, but we've also had some games where we sort of deserve to take a bit more out of. So I don't know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough, tough game, but I'm quietly confident with Everton. Just mm. because of some of your injuries, maybe, and just because we're away from home. Yeah, I think, you know, we've just recorded this uh, over on Michael's channel as well. Um, go check it out. The link will be in the description. But um, Rafinha and Bamford could be out, which is, I mean, we were talking about on, on your channel. It is, it's absolutely massive if those two are out. Focal points, really, in this team. Rafinha, first guy on the team sheet. But I want to talk about Everton a little bit more. And we spoke about it a bit on your channel, Mike. But... We sort of had your number last time we played you and, and for the first time ever and everyone will laugh in, in, in this comment section because I'm actually positive going into a game. I think if we've got a full strength side, this man marking system, it could really hurt Everton neutralising James Rodriguez, as we're saying, is a big part and was a big part of our game if, if Stuart Dallas just follows him around like he's done with uh, Madison and, and like we have done with Jack Grealish. It, it could really hinder Everton, couldn't it? Yeah, you, you, you think everything that we do creatively wise really does come through him. Whether it be an assist or a pre-assist, it, it all comes through him. Um, he was the one who was passing the ball to Luca Dean and Luca Dean was passing, putting the ball in the box, for example. You man Mark Hammers, Everton struggle. And, and Everton have already had struggles anyway. So mm. you take Hammers out of the game. Um, there's only one winner for me. And what did um, Carlo say in his press conference today? Yeah, so Carlo, Carlo essentially said that <laughs> he, he bigged up Bielsa um, because obviously you beat us at our place and he said he's only played Bielsa once and, and he did a good job on him. He did a, mm. he did a full job on Everton and he wants to get revenge. But we've got, we've got no major injury concerns other than the ones we already know of, which is Alan, um, Gabami, who you probably have never even heard of, so don't worry about don't it. Think, don't think you have, have you? <laughs> Honestly, two and a half years, we've never seen him. £25 million, pounds, never seen him. Um, so nothing's really going to change from Everton. Obviously, we've signed Josh King, but I am completely unaware if he is available 
or not. I don't know whether because he was signed. I don't know whether because we don't play tonight, he's available for tomorrow. I haven't got a clue. Um, so if, if he's in the team, that might be an additional bit of pace to help us. But to be honest, I'm, I'm scared for this game because Leeds have been fantastic. That you know, and I, we said this in our video. It's gone where you were winning four three, five four. You it was almost ship or bust. Now you you can control a game. You know, you mentioned earlier, and and I'm going to completely steal your point. So you knackered. But the Burnley game, you know, Burnley had you hemmed in for the majority of the game. Newcastle probably in the second half. It's fair to say. Probably dominated Leeds in the second half, and he still won both of those games. So Bielsa has had to adapt, and it's credit to Leeds. And it's just whether Everton can cope with that. You know, there will be times when Everton can get in behind Leeds. You know, Leeds, Leeds are, you know, Leeds are not going to win the league this season. They're not the best team in the world defensively. There is still questions. Everton will still be able to have a go, but if you sit on Hammers. It's going to be a lot less consistent, and and that's where you'll be able to deal with us. We won't have the pressure on you constantly. It's going to be a tough, tough game, and I just don't, I just don't know what to expect. So we saw the three four three at Ellen Road, um, and it, and it. I mean, I don't think it was. I thought your wing backs were decent to say it was. I think it was uh, a well being Tom Davis uh, at wing backs, wasn't it? We, to say you know, I, I don't think they were massively exposed. I thought you know we, we were decent on the wings, but I thought Evan did an all right job. I, I presume you expect Evan to be in the four two three one um, for this game. I, I'm expecting either four three three or four two three one for me. Uh, I, I, do, you, do you want me to go through my team or? Yeah, yeah, far away. Yeah, so I expect Olsen, I expect the back four to be Godfrey, Mina, Keane and, and Holgate. So you'll see a notable drop there in Luca Dean and, and Seamus Coleman. I'm probably expecting to call Ray and Tom Davis. This is where Luca Dean comes in for me. I play him in left midfield. So whether that's a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1, a or, or even a four-two-four, and and them two come back and react as a four-four-two in the transition. But he goes on the left. Then you you've got to play Hammers as the ten. I think Iwobi plays over on the right, and I think Calvert Lewin up front. For me, Richarlison doesn't play. However, that won't be what happens because Carlo will not drop Richarlison. But that's what I would do personally because Richarlison has been awful this season. To be fair, bar four games, he's been shocking. And we spoke about it on, on your channel as well with regards to Everton not really dealing with the 10 that well. Um, coming up against Leeds, where even with sort of injuries that we have, we're still a very creative side. Um, is is this a game where you think that Allen is going to be a massive miss? Because, I mean, obviously I don't watch Everton week in, week out. What would what will Tom Davis give in that role as sort of, as sort of an alternative? Nothing. He won't give nothing. The... <laughs> He won't give nothing. The the issue is, it, it's like going, you know, Alan, I really rate, you know, before he got injured, he was the highest in tackles and stats and all of this fantastic stuff. But the facts are, it's like, it's, I described it, it's like going from like Chelsea to Chesterfield. It, it's probably, it's probably, it's probably like, what I'd say, Mike, is it's probably similar to us losing Calvin Phillips in our system, isn't it? It's the anchor. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you lose so much when you lose that pivot who can sort of turn both ways and play that ball forward. And Tom Davis, don't get me wrong, he can do it and he's had some decent games, but being brutally honest, he's nowhere near Alan's level. And he will have a massively tough afternoon, no matter who you play, because in my opinion, Tom Davis is a championship midfielder and your team is clearly not a championship midfield. So it's going to be a tough one. To call that, he's going to have a massive job. But... You've got to remember, Leeds played through the middle of us for your goal, and you you nullified Alan. So it, I'm almost semi like, even if Alan was in the team, this is a tough game for Everton just because of the way Leeds play. It's a game where I think Leeds have got to come forward a bit more because they are the home team, and that's where Everton are good. That if we sit back and Leeds attack us. Like we should have done at Goodison, we will hit you on the break. And we we have got the pace of players like Calvert Lewin, Iwobi, Rashalison if he starts, Josh King if he's available, Luca Dean on the left. If we can get the ball 
quickly to those four players. We will hurt Leeds on the break and then we'll be so comfortable sitting back. You won't be able to get in behind us. But the difference is with Leeds, and this is why it makes Leeds so difficult to play from an Everton perspective. You're happy to play in front of us because you've mm. got the players who have that individual bit of brilliance, that moment of quality. You know, the the uh, click as your, as your number 10, Rafinha, if he's available or if he's not available, you know, Patrick Bamford over the top. It's very, very easy for Leeds to either play on the wings because you've got Ailing, who can absolutely rip teams apart down the right-hand side, or you can play through the middle because you've got quality with Calvin Phillips sitting at the base. So Leeds are, in my opinion, a very good team and are definitely geared up for a top-eight finish in the Premier League, and I said that in my predictions, but it's took him a bit of time to adapt, which is only natural. Next season, I'm really concerned about Leeds because I think Leeds could be like a Wolves and have fantastic seasons, challenge, I really do. But I'm confident Everton can go to Leeds tomorrow, get a result because you'll have to attack us. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, Mike, it's the, it's, it's the only way. <laughs> and it's, yeah, yeah. it's it's anxiety-ridden watching Leeds. But at the same time, you know, when you get results like at the weekend and, you know, you get results like we've had this season, Newcastle, West Brom, where we've just been electrifying uh, Everton as well. You know, I, that, that Everton performance was, yeah, we, we, we let some chances go, but it was a it was a nigh-on sort of eight, nine out of ten performance. Yeah. And, and, and I, 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 I sort of want to put it to you. I mean, obviously, we sort of dictated the game really with Calvin and and it's the difference is going to be if Rafinha's out of the side because if Rafinha's out of the side the out ball might not be as effective um how do you stop Calvin Phillips is it a case of Rodriguez pressing a little bit further higher is it a case of Everton as a team pressing further up the field because then obviously if you press further up then you know you're going to leave space at the, at the back aren't you we won't try we won't yeah. try. We'll let, we'll let Le- Leeds have as much of the ball as they want in front of us. I think you'll see the possession stats tomorrow being like 65-35 in Leeds' favour. Because do, you, we, we, do, you, do you just think Everton are going to counter-attack tomorrow? Absolutely. Right, absolutely. OK. And I think he will set up in that way to do that, which is why he's almost going to play as many people behind the ball as he physically can. Use the outlets of the pace of Iwobi and Richarlison or Luca Dean and Calvert Lewin to just run the ball up the pitch. Yeah, and then you'll have the reinforcement of Hammers coming in. But we'll only go we'll only go four against your back four. We won't overload the box. We won't leave men out of position. We will sit back, and that's the only way I think we ever and get results this season. You know, we were winning teams five two at the start of the season. We were doing the leads, mm. but. We concede too many goals, do we? And and Calvert Lewin hasn't scored in I think it's five now in can the you, league. Can you, can you touch on him, Mike, as well? What what's going on? What's going on with him at this moment in time? Well, he's he's missed the supply from Hammers and Luca Dean because at the start of the season the ball would come into Hammers, Luca Dean would make that overlapping run, and the ball would go into the box. And Calvert Lewin, you saw him, um, you know, you saw the headers yourself. I think we spoke about the height he got on that one particular header. He's a very good finisher in front of box, in front of goal. But he had the same opportunity against Leicester the other night and he missed. And I don't know whether his confidence has been knocked because he's not scored in a few games. Mm. But it, I wouldn't even necessarily say he looks like scoring. Right. And we need to find that quickly because if, if we lose, the, if we haven't had the goals of Richarlison, if we don't have them from Calvert-Lewin, where do they come from? Because you, you, you were in quite a, a rich vein of form before this uh, Leicester game, weren't you? Yeah, we were. I mean, we we'd lost five in seventeen. It, it, it it's not like you know we lost five in seventeen and we had ten wins. I mean, and, draw, it, and, and Mike as well drawing against Leicester at home is a good result. Yeah, it was just the Newcastle game, not just not just for six. Um, and we've done it consistently this season. We lost to West Ham. Uh, we lost to Newcastle, and no disrespect to Leeds, but we we lost to you guys. And you'd like to think that. A, a team that was fighting at the time for top four, so mm. you like to think we aren't losing those games, but it, mm. it was a reality check for a lot of Everton fans, and that, and that's it, probably one thing that you see in the comments from me saying that is we aren't as good as we think we are. We got ahead of ourselves, 
we certainly did the first five games. I mean, we were top of the league and no one was anywhere near us. We thought we were winning a lot. The FA Cup, the under eight, the under 16s. We were smashing a lot. We were winning Champions League. We're not even in it. But we, we've sort of come back down to earth with a bit of a bang. Yes, again, we've still got two games in hand on pretty much all of the teams above us. Everton can still be fourth in the league if we win our two games in hand and three points off the top of the table. So it's, it's not like Everton are all of a sudden a bad team, but they just have these ridiculous results that really cost us, and four of them have been at home. Do you think it's it, there's a, a case as well for the sort of bounce back ability? Because I know that with Bielsa's sides, you know, we might lose two on the bounce, but we're always then going to win two or three. You know, there's always that bounce back with Bielsa's side and, and you sort of feel that that's going to come. Like, do you get the same feeling with Everton? No, right. because we never, we've never had, we've never had that bounce. Because, for example, when we lost, when we lost to Man United at, at Goodison, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer was getting sacked. That was it. It was done. He was finished. He goes to Goodison. He turns us over three one. We then go to Newcastle away and lose. Southampton we lose. We play Fulham, barely beat them. We then lose a couple of other games. We're not. We're not good at recovering. We haven't we haven't quite got that mentality of a top team yet because a top team and a top manager installs that in his players and, and will say, look, you go one nil down, you bounce back. You you lose two games, you bounce back. Every game's different. You you had that from the championship last season. You know, yeah. you knew that you were top of the league. If you lost a game, you knew next week you were winning. And Bielsa installed that. Carlo hasn't really had that with Everton because Everton's been a mid-table team under Ancelotti. And and to be fair, since David Moyes, it's more regularly been a, a mid-table team than, than a, a team fighting for top four, top five, like it used to under Moyes in the first season under Martinez. So the mentality isn't there at Everton. And you can see that. You see it in performances like Newcastle where they completely bottle it. You see it against, against, against you, like against Leeds. We could have gone second. And and with with a four point gap when we played you lot, and we bottled it completely, bottled it, and that's a consistent theme. Once Everton lose one, they probably lose two or three, and then they get going again. But it right. does take a bit of time to get back. The only the only reason I'm confident Everton can get a result against Leeds is because Carlo doesn't like losing twice to a team. And he's done it to Newcastle. I don't think he wants to do it against Leeds. He doesn't want to do. He doesn't want two six pointers after each other. And he and he certainly won't want Everton to go there and put in as bad a performance as, as we did against Leeds uh, against Newcastle. Because being honest, there was only one team winning that, and that was that was Newcastle. Who Mike, I mean, Mike, I mean, we don't. I mean, that's the parallels, isn't it? Newcastle hadn't won in ten. Leicester were unbeaten in 10. We went there and won. Obviously, you lost mm -hmm. You lost to uh, Newcastle. But with regards to the pressure then, I, as a Leeds fan right now, we're sat on 29 points. Do I think we're going to pick up another two or three wins this year and, and stay up? I do. I think I think well, there's no chance we're going down. And that's the, that's the expectation for a lot of Leeds fans, that it's just staying in the division. So with that in mind, is the pressure massively on Everton for this game? Uh, I th I think it's on the players. Yeah, I think it's on the players. I don't necessarily, I, I don't necessarily think it is from the outside because I don't think many media channels put Everton in the top six at the start of the season. No, no. So we don't think the pressure's on from that perspective. Mm. But it's it's on the players from Carla. You know, a week ago or nine days ago now, Carla Mancini said Everton are going to work out where they're going to finish this season this week. Yeah. We went away to, Le uh, to Leicester. We got a 1-1 draw. And and on the face of it, you take that. But Leicester battered us for 60 minutes. Then you go to Newcastle at home, you lose. So Carlo comes out today and he says, well, it showed me the mentality of the players. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's awful. He doesn't want that mentality and he won't put up with that next season. So no. this season is a transition for Everton. Because you know he's going to be backed. It's not. It's, you don't get a manager like Carlo Ancelotti and not back the man. So, so you know that Everton next season are probably a different animal to this season. But after starting so well, 
and and being in the top six for so long this season. I mean, there's only been two games we've been outside the top six this season. You, you've got to be disappointed that we're still not in it after losing the, them games that I'm on about them four at home. It's it's unacceptable almost. Hmm. But who knows? Who who knows about the pressure? But Carlo Carlo's definitely definitely had a go at the players, and I'm expecting a much better performance against you like than we did against me. I'm expecting a bounce back. What about from the fans, Mike? Well, I th- I think. We put the pressure on ourselves. Earlier in the stream, I said, you know, we, we got so overconfident on ourselves at the start of the season. And we all did. I did. I sat there going, yeah, we, we can piss the top four. We'll finish third. <laughs> you know, and, and, you, and you put it in perspective and you almost accept the fact that you were wrong. I was wrong. Hmm. Now, do I think we're in the chase for Europe? Yes. Does that mean we're going to finish seventh? Probably. And that, and that's that's putting it in brass tax form, you know. That that's saying that Tottenham, all of the top six as we know them, bar Arsenal, because I don't think they're going to be anywhere near the top seven. I think they're poor. So I think Le- Le- Leicester replace Arsenal in the top six, and I think Everton follow up. And that's the way I think the season will end. I think I think Everton two games in hand, they'll be confident they they can get a result in those games. We'd be third if we won them games. So. There is pressure from the fans, but I think there is also now a realism that we aren't as good as we thought we were. Where can Leeds hurt you? It's fucking everywhere. Middle of the pitch, because we haven't got any... In my opinion, we haven't got the grit in the middle of the park that's going to stop your creative players. You can get down the left and the right of us. That can really hurt us. Um, and, and, uh, and I suspect you will get get down the left and right of us if we don't play that, that flat back four. Um, so, yeah, you, you, just the sheer pace and ferocity of Leeds can hurt Everton because we are slower than you lot, naturally. Um, Pickford. Now, he actually was brilliant at <laughs> Goodison Park against Leeds. He was actually superb, probably one of the best players on the pitch. Um, yeah. Obviously, Leicester, he, he makes sort of another characteristic mistake. He's out for this game. Olsen comes in. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I'm so much more reassured because <laughs> because it, whereas the players have pressure from Carlo Ancelotti, they also have pressure from Pickford because they know if the ball goes near Pickford, there's a very strong chance he can completely fluff it. And, you know, he showed it against Leicester. It was, again, Everton were defending really well. The, ball, the goal comes from outside the box with eight Everton players in front of the ball. I don't I don't know if you've saw the goal, but yeah. the ball he's got literally it's harder to score than it is to get it anywhere. And it manages to get through the eight players and and it gets down to Pickford's right hand side and it's right next to him. It's almost mm. easier to kick it with his foot than it is to dive. Yeah. And he he doesn't deal with something simple. He makes a couple of good saves at Newcastle where again I expect his head to be all over the place because he, when he plays against Newcastle, he, he just ain't got it. He ain't, he ain't he ain't stable enough, and he does it against Leicester. He did it against Leicester. He did it against Liverpool. He does it against. He does it when we need to win the game. There's a mistake when we need to win the game, and this is why with the Leeds game, it's a game Everton have to win because if we don't win, we've gone from being top six. And being fairly confident we're going to finish in and around Europe to we're 10th in the lead and Arsenal are above us. Mm, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's, and that's why I mentioned the pressure, mate, because I think with us, I think, don't get me wrong, the expectation rises when you beat teams like Leicester. Um, and then yeah. obviously Everton have been beaten at the weekend and we've already got you know, three points on them. But I think, I think a lot of realistic Leeds fans just look at this and, I mean, I'd be over the moon with the draw. We still respect Everton as a side. They've still got world-class players. Um, if I was to push you for a result, mate, I think you mentioned it on your other channel, but um, I think you've been a bit more negative on this one, which I like. <laughs> no, well, it, it's, it's not that. It's just I, 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 Everton, in my, my opinion, win 2-1. Yeah. But I kind of want, I mean, who the, who the hell am I to tell Carlo Ancelotti what to do? But the mm. facts are, if we sit back 
and we allow you to press and we counter, I don't necessarily think Leeds can deal with that. Mm. And, and that's where Everton will get the result. Explaining Everton and, and sort of really breaking us down, it's difficult to be positive because if you'd have spoke to me before the Newcastle game, I'd have said, yeah, we're, we're fantastic. You know, we've got results against all these top teams. But if you can't beat the teams at home, like, again, no disrespect, but Leeds, West Ham and Newcastle, you're going to struggle. Yeah, and I think I think as well with with uh, you know with what we saw, it was it was just a bit of a there was a bit of a mentality problem with Everton at the weekend, and I mean they really were poor. Um, but yeah, mate, I, I mean it's going to be an interesting game. But thanks for coming on, guys. Make sure yeah. you go check out the Blue Boys Network and up and coming the best Everton fan channel out there. So the link will be in the description below. Make sure you go check Mike and um, who, who's the other? Is it is it Sean? John, John, John but no one knows him, so it's fine. He's not there for two weeks anyway. He's just had a baby. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Um, so make sure you check that out, guys. Mike, cheers for coming on the channel, buddy. No worries, mate. And uh, I wish you the best of luck apart from Wednesday. After the Obviously. game, yeah. Cheers, mate. And uh, we'll see you in a bit, guys. Cheers. Yeah. See you later.